Hey everybody, it's Miss P.E. Uh, your assignment this week is a listening assignment about one of my most favorite, favorite composers to play, Frédéric Chopin. Chopin was half French and half Polish, so he grew up in Poland for most of his life, but he spent the second half of his life in Paris, France, um, which is the capital. Um, here's a picture of a little like artist little cartoon of him. I hope you can see that and also of my closet, so enjoy. <laughs> um, Frederick Chopin was born in 1810 and he died in 1849. So he was under 40 when he passed away. He was quite, quite young, very sensitive soul, but he's important because um, his music on the piano specifically kind of made the piano a, like its own solo instrument, right? So like at the time, you were cool if you could write music for the piano, but you were cooler if you could write a symphony and concertos and stuff for all the other instruments, right? But his music for the piano was so hard to learn, like we call that technically difficult, right? Because you have to practice it a lot. And so lovely that it brought the piano to like a whole new level as far as a performance instrument. So. Um, next week for, with your assignment, I'll post some bonus content of me performing, uh, some of his music, but I didn't get a chance to do that today. So I'll add that as a little like extra material for you guys to see next week. Uh, but today I shall read to you the story of Frederick Chopin. Okay, here we go. Even as a child, Frederick Chopin was terribly sensitive, almost not quite of this world. His family was musical and baby Chopin would cry with pleasure at the beautiful sounds they could make. The family pampered and adored him. He played dolls with his three older sisters and went ice skating with them. His first piano teacher was his older sister, Louisa, who was seven. With another sister, he started the Literary Amusement Association at age 14, a newspaper full of funny stories and daily events. It was actually used as his diary, so we kind of have a little sense of what he was like growing up from this journal. His life revolved around music. He started playing at age four and began performing at age eight. Often wondering what people thought about his velvet jacket, perhaps more than what they thought about his music, he began publishing his own compositions in his teens. Uh, at one point, another composer of the time, Robert Schumann, would write, Hats off, gentlemen, this man's a genius. Schumann was a little bit older than Chopin. Um, if you have siblings who are in third or fourth grade, uh, last week we, they learned about uh, Robert Schumann's wife, Clara Schumann. So musicians who are alive and making music at the same time, we call contemporaries, okay? So Robert Schumann and Frederick Chopin were contemporaries. Justin Bieber and Billie Eilish are contemporaries, okay? So people who are alive making music or kind of involved in the same kind of craft at the same time, okay? Uh, but Schumann really had a lot of respect for Chopin and his musicianship. Uh, even Chopin's practical jokes were musical. He would put people to sleep with soft playing and then wake them up with a bang. Chopin also had deep feelings for Poland. When he left the country at age 20, it is said that he took with him a silver cup full of Polish dirt. Much of the music he went on to write, the waltzes, mazurkas, and polonaises, these are dances, recreated feelings and sounds from his childhood in Poland. And that's important because at the time Chopin was writing, um, it was cool for composers to use folk songs, like songs everyone would know, like for us, maybe like, Mary had a little lamb, right? So they would take these melodies that people knew and put them into these very intricate and difficult pieces of music to kind of like show how such a simple melody could grow into like a fantastic piece to perform. So that was like something people did all the time and songs that Chopin would have learned in Poland really inspired the music that he made later in life. People said that Chopin looked like his music. He was pale, handsome, and unhealthy. <laughs> he weighed less than 100 pounds. His black silky hair hung in locks on his forehead. He had a sweet smile and a big nose. He carried himself proudly as a prince and never swore or was crude. He is no man, he is an angel, a god, wrote one friend. But he was not always so charming. Another friend called him temperamental, full of fantasies, and unreliable. Temperamental means like moody. He was sometimes suspicious and self-centered, and his wit could be malicious. That means sometimes his jokes could be a little mean and might hurt somebody's feelings. However, his feelings were easily hurt, and he can often spend a whole day pouting in his room. And he had some other funny quirks. 
He couldn't sleep, for example, unless his slippers were lined up exactly in front of his bed. He never entered a room on his left foot first. He always had to step into a room with his right foot. Sudden surprises, like a servant coming into the room, made his hair stand on end, and some smells made him sick. He was too delicate to drink wine or coffee. He only really drank milk, and he would only eat certain foods, bread, pastries, chicken, and fish. Can't blame him there. He likes carbs. Who knew? Bach and Mozart were the only composers Chopin loved without reservation. Just before giving a concert, he would practice Bach. Uh, we'll talk about Bach a little later. <laughs> uh, he wasn't crazy about other composers, and he wasn't a big reader, but all of the famous musicians and writers of the time were his friends, his contemporaries. <laughs> After being introduced to each other by a, a composer named Franz Liszt, Chopin and Georges Sand became one of the most famous pairs in the 19th century. They fell madly in love with each other. George Sand was a famous French novelist. Uh, she was actually a woman, but a lot of times women couldn't get published, so she published under a male name so that people would take her work seriously. Um, uh, her real name was Aurora Dudevant, and she was an independent feminist who wore trousers and wrote more than 60 novels and 19,000 letters. In her spare time, she climbed mountains. Not quite sure how they gelled, but these things happen. Chopin never married, but he and Georges Sand lived in houses next door to each other in Paris. She called him Chop or Chip Chip or sometimes My Dear or My Little Complainer. <laughs> he kept a lock of her hair in his diary until the day he died. Their first vacation they spent together in a monastery on the island of Majorca in Spain. Chopin brought his volumes of Bach in some unfinished compositions and plenty of music paper. Um, he became quite sick and by the time they returned. Later, spending summers at her house in the country, they had a quiet life and early outdoor dinners and visits with friends. At twilight, that sunset, Chopin would play for her. These were his most productive years. Oof, I love that. Chopin got his ideas quickly while walking or playing the piano, but he locked himself in his room for days at a time to perfect them, weeping, crying, pacing like a madman and breaking his pens with frustration. He could work for six weeks on one single page of music. Often he wrote in the middle of the night. He had a piano in his bedroom, much to his neighbor's upsetness. They did not like that. He does not know on what planet he exists, one of his friends later said. Chopin was one of the greatest pianists in history. His small, delicate hands played softly but hypnotically. His feet were in constant motion, using the pedals so quickly that his legs appeared to be vibrating. He hated large public performances, but the private concerts he held for his friends became legendary. One concert he played by moonlight, for a moth had fallen into the lamp and extinguished the flame. That means like, so they only had lanterns at the time, right? They didn't have electricity. So like all the lamps went out and he just used the light of the moon to, to illuminate his music. Oh. To relieve the serious moods his playing created, he would break into imitations. He was an excellent mimic and some friends thought he should give up piano for acting. He never missed an opening night at the theater. Um, so mimic means like he could do impressions of other people. For instance, like he could do a British accent or he could impersonate another one of his friends. I'm a revolutionary. Money means nothing to me, Chopin said, but he didn't seem to mind having it. <laughs> he supported himself by teaching five lessons a day for countesses, baronesses, and princesses who paid quite well. Um, oh, uh-oh. Where did I go? There we go. <laughs> he lived in luxury. He had a servant, his own horse and carriage, and clothes from all the best shops. You know, Miss P.E. loves her fashion people. Blue velvet coats, silk shirts, diamond pins, white leather gloves, and a flowing black cloak made with gray satin. Um, always sickly. Chopin died of tuberculosis at the age of 39. This was a very common illness back then. Um, less than two years after he and Sand had broken off their relationship. His last words were, play Mozart in memory of me. And all of the music performed at his funeral was uh, Mozart's music. Um, he was buried in La Père Lachaise, a, a cemetery in Paris where many famous musicians are buried. The legend is that Chopin's silver cup of Polish dirt was poured on his grave. Um, so the pieces I'm gonna attach for you, 
one of them he wrote for George Sand's cat. This is called the Minute Waltz, but people don't know if it's the Minute Waltz or the Minute Waltz. Minute is a fancy way of saying really teeny, right? But you can play this song very, very fast. You've probably heard it before. Um, so I'm attaching that one. Um, and I'm attaching one more of his most famous songs called The Funeral March, which is very slow and sad, but very lovely. Um, and like I said, I'll post some bonus material for you next week. I'm, I know that was a little bit long. I hope you guys enjoyed it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I miss delivering this to you in person, but hopefully, you know, we can do some more read alouds and vary the material. See you soon.